Hey guys, Dov here with some more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. Today I'm going to be bringing you some replays of some factions I don't play super often, but I managed to convince uh, Killing Smalls to uh, play a couple games here. I've taken the Dwarves, wanted to try out the Gyro Bomber change. Gyro Bomber is already one of the most underrated units uh, on the Dwarf roster in my opinion. Exceptionally squishy, lowest health of any single entity model, but does do a lot of missile damage. Now has this uh, suppression effect here, so the Dwarfs do get an additional slow. For the rest of the army, we've got a flame cannon here, front line of miners with blasting charges, some long beards, three quarrelers, Ungrim and Godtrek, plus a rune smith and the dragonback slayers, plus more slayers hidden back there in the woods. We're up against Bretonia today, killing Smalls. I wanted to talk about the Bretonia matchup a little bit, try out some builds. And so here we are with this one. He's got eight peasant archers to start, which is pretty good. A bunch of veteran foot squires, some mobs up front, uh, defenders of Lord Lee, and King Lewin, along with some mounted yeomen over here on the side. So, yeah, right off the bat, we're going to be launching these... Flame cannon shots into the peasant lines, just bombing whatever, whatever we can here. Let's get in close as these foot squires and peasant archers just get absolutely roasted. Beautiful stuff. And I had been doing some initial skirmishing on those defenders. They're going to get a nice charge into the miners with blasting charges. Meanwhile, the mounted yeoman pushing up in the back here. <clears throat> we hit them with that suppression effect, and you can see speed goes down significantly there. Uh, still a little bit late on the support with the Slayers and the Dragonback Slayers, but even still, we should be able to uh, finish them off. Meanwhile, uh, Killing Small is doing a great job. You can see the focus fire from the Peasant Bows, despite their lack of armor piercing, is still just doing immense damage to these Corollers. Even with their Missile Block Chance and 80 armor, it is just absolutely brutal. But managed to secure the Flame Cannon so we can get this back online. Longbeard's moving out to the flank here to uh, make sure we lock down these Foot Squires. Uh... Gautrek and, uh, and Ungrim just chilling for the time being. But here, Lewin drops down, and you can see how these Longbeards are kind of in a little bit of a block formation. One of the reasons I do this is that if Lewin does get stuck in the middle, the mass of these guys is going to be way too much for him. Not to mention the suppression effect is firing in, and obviously because of the change, it's going to be hitting Lewin and none of my troops. We also hit him with the Rune of Wrath and Ruin there, so he's down to only 10 speed. No way he can escape from this situation. Dragonback Slayers, of course, also put a speed debuff as well, so he is actually at minimum speed here. Tries to pull out the other way, but here's Ungrim getting stagger stepped. Oh, and Gautrek. Well, this is just a bad time in general for Lewin. He's going to take a lot of damage right here. And, yeah, it just gets absolutely routed pretty quickly. That being said, uh, my lines are getting pretty thin. The Foot Squires are beating out the Miners, as you would expect. Still kind of not doing that great of a job, considering the cost. But still, Flem Cannon's managed to use up some of its ammunition. Uh, let's see here. Up to 140 kills, but now getting Focus Fired by the Peasant Archers there. So, uh, balance power pretty heavily in my favor, obviously, with the loss of, Lu loss of Luin. That's going to be pretty intense, but a nice bombing run here. Absolutely wrecks those foot squires. We'll pe keep it close to the bomber here as it flies through. And I'm definitely a big fan of that suppression effect. Just gives the bomber some extra utility. It is very squishy still, but considering how it's really not that expensive, to be honest. I mean, 1150 really isn't a whole lot, especially considering the dwarfs. It's pretty easy to take a nice wide cost effective army of infantry. And then a few elites to kind of uh, clean it up. But yeah, check out this damsel. Just a few volleys here are just going to destroy her face. This is one thing um, that basically this is the reason why I was such a big fan of the gyro before. Is if you pull up close to a single entity, even a, a character on foot, especially on or a character on foot or horseback because they don't have much HP. The uh, multi-shot gun, the main gun of the gyro bomber will just do immense amount of damage to them. Um up close. So yes, here we can see it blasting away at some peasants. Uh, most of my dwarf units themselves have been routed off. It's actually uh, mostly just uh, Gautrek and Ungrim here. We do have this unit of Slayers relatively healthy. There's still so many archers here. So many archers with so much ammo left. Um, killing Smalls and I definitely agreed that if uh, he hadn't lost Slew in there, he probably would have had a pretty good chance to finish things. Uh, just considering how many archers are left. Right now, they're going to hit 
hit army losses just because of the leadership situation here. Or at least getting close to it, but we'll see. Um, yeah, that, in general though, I have to say I'm a huge fan of the gyro. Hasn't gotten XP Chevron somehow. But still, it's been able to help control various high-value units, just go around and delete things. Flame Cannon also was definitely a fun pick. I don't know that it's necessarily super competitive, but I definitely think it's uh can catch your opponent off guard. So anyway, very fun stuff. Big thanks to Killing Smalls. In terms of analysis on this one, yeah, I mean, this is generally considered to be a tough matchup for Bretonia, so I'm not really too surprised that I could take a handful of medium units and still come out on top. But at the same time, I like this build from Killing Smalls. We'll talk a little bit more about this in just a second. Um, but for myself, I mean, Slayers, using their mobility to carve up a bunch of peasants there. Some of the Blasting Charges got some good volleys, but not really. Longbeards actually got out-traded very nicely by the uh, Foot Squires there. You can see none of them ranked up. They were all ranked 2 to begin with, but still, 94 kills, 64, 66. That's not too bad. And the uh, Peasant Archers, I mean, the Flame Cannon was able to kind of counter-skirmish them a little bit there. Uh, which was nice for me. The Corlers just got absolutely shredded, though. And uh, I was saying for Killing Smalls, also, if he had managed to catch the Gyro Bomber um, out at some point and just mow it down with all these Peasant Archers, because the Gyro Bomber has such low HP, even though it does have a lot of armor, you're still going to just take so much damage from that volume of Peasant Archer fire. Um, but yeah, let's, take, let's talk a little bit more about this from the Bretonian side. <clears throat> kind of some various things that we had talked about. Before we move on, I do have one more quick replay to show you guys. Um, but just quickly talking about the, the Bretonians versus the Dwarfs. It's not a matchup that you would want to take with Bretonia, but I don't think it's as bad as some other matchups. So this is one that you would maybe not ban. Like, for me personally, I'd probably ban Tomb Kings and Lizardmen in a tournament situation if I had a double ban. That means I might potentially face the Dwarfs, so just knowing some stuff about this matchup, um, I do think that there's some things in the Banner Rule set, which is the one that, uh, you know, I use for my tournaments, and it's also what, you know, Turin uses for the ECL, and, and uh, Italian uses for the Warpstone Cup, and so on. It allows you to take eight units if they're a variant. Now, there are some specific kind of... Uh, limitations on that but generally especially like a cheap infantry or archery unit you can take eight of them as long as there's like some kind of weapon variation here so in this situation we'd want to go with the pox arrows and the regular peasant arrows go as wide as possible Luin's definitely a very solid choice and you can do a few different things here um you could take another unit of hippogriff knights just to punish units that try and come towards you Go with something like four trebuchets, and this is called uh, Counter Shoot the Dwarves. This is 12 ranged units. I'd have to double check. I want to say in Banner rule set that is the maximum number of ranged units you can bring. So we're going to max out there. Um, and then, of course, obviously for healing the Hippogriffs, we want a Damsel with Lore of Life. Um, we're just going to take her on foot. No need for the magic resistance or anything. Um, we'll just take Shield of Thorns and uh, Regrowth. And then from there, we can take some speed bumps. And we have enough for maybe like one uh, veteran unit. We could take maybe like some spearmen at arms. The spears just to give extra melee defense. Um, or, I mean, I guess we could even afford to take not quite one foot squire. But we could just take like two, uh, <laughs> maybe two of these guys here, something like this. I don't know. Just kind of spitballing here. Maybe you would actually want to take the Swordsmen at Arms instead because they are going to be slightly better. And they still do have pretty solid melee defense. Considering the Dwarfs really don't have much melee attack. Something like this might not be too bad. You have some mobile units to kind of counter punch if the Dwarfs overextend. And then you really just try and play off of the missiles as much as you can. If they have more cannons, like if they have like four cannons for example, then you just push forward. Try and use your Peasant Bowmen to mow their cannons down. Granted, you are super light on infantry, so they can just rush you. <clears> or <throat> try and rush you, at least. But, I mean, a Peasant Bowman at 33 speed can outclass most Dwarfs' uh, speed. I mean, most Dwarfs are coming in at, like, 36. Even the quote-unquote fast Dwarf units like Slayers, right? Slayers are 40, so they will be able to catch you. Um, but, like, Rangers, I think, only are 33, right, as well, so... Even the peasant archers <laughs> can kite dwarfs for the most part. So as long as you're on top of your micro, um, you can avoid getting caught in melee. And uh, yeah, that's it for this particular matchup. Let's go ahead and move on to the next replay. 
And these guys right here are my favorite thing about the Vampire Coast. I mean, obviously, a lord with a pistol riding a giant crab is going to be something that I enjoy. And not to mention, I'm just a fan of powder units in general. I am a little bit sad that uh, I don't really enjoy the, the play style of Dwarfs and Vampire Coast as much, but... We gotta admire the Apex Zombie in the game here. We got two of them on some crabs, the Pistol Admiral, and we're rocking a whole bunch of mobile units as well. We got four Doggos and the Night Terrors for some terror, obviously. Um, we've got some uh, polearm mobs, some bomber mobs, a couple handgun mobs, including the new and improved Black Spot, had their refire rate buffed, and a single carronade tastefully deployed along with them, and some fell bats. As for killing smalls again, this time taking the Empire, he's got Marcus Wolfhart here, some Huntsmen, uh, let's see, this is the Silver Bullets, and Sterling's Revenge, <coughs> excuse me. We've also got uh, Empire Knights, some Pistoliers, plenty of Sigmar's Sons, uh, yeah, Flagellants, and uh, Swordsmen, I, I would imagine Sigmar's Sons, yep. And some more Empire Knights over here, so pretty good stuff. Off the bat, I'm going to be unloading the Carronades onto the Empire Knights as much as I can. Uh, Marcus and the Celestial Wizard come forward, though, and are going to try and take out my cannon. Celestial Wizard doesn't want to stand too close, though. My handguns can get him in range here, so... And yeah, look at that, though. Already, we were downed two Carronades. Just one left. That's fine by me. I mean, it is 700 points. I've lost, uh, you know, two-thirds of its value, but that's not the biggest deal. We're going to rush in now with the hounds deploying scary from the woods, and you can see the gun crabs have already been picking away at the Celestial Wizard here, and uh, he's just going to get absolutely swarmed by doggos. The Empire Knights try and countercharge down the hill, but suddenly find themselves absolutely trapped by a multitude of hounds. They are going to crush one unit here, most likely, but the Night Terrors also come in, with their uh, big spooky mouths, just absolutely hanging jaws, and proc a quick tear out on those Empire Knights, so we can immediately pull away, just start to kind of pick asymmetric engagements, and this is really kind of not something that you would expect from the coast necessarily, right? But a beautiful net here from Killing Smalls is going to allow these Sterling's Revenge to just absolutely unload point blank, along with the Pistoliers. Sterling's Revenge actually, uh, yeah, they're just going to absolutely blast these hounds here, oh man. One unit of hounds just straight up goes down to that withering fire. Not going to be able to stabilize them, but we do pull the rest back. Meanwhile, the zombie lines are moving forward here. We did lose a unit of bombers as well to the huntsmen, doing some great focus fire. We'll kind of keep it in view here of the Empire as they shoot and shoot. And yeah, we've got a lot of counter skirmish. We can go ahead and pull up some pistol mobs here to provide a little bit of mobile counter skirmishing right here. And they can shoot and move very slowly, but also just provide some nice DPS to whatever. While the Gun Crab crews push up the side. Also got the Night Terrors picking away at some Flagellants up here on the high ground. And uh, Swordsmen and Pistoliers and other things. Hounds had been stabilized somewhat, so we're going to go ahead and charge in here. Killing Smalls, countercharging with the Pistoliers to provide some mass. And, I mean, these are still Sterling's Revenge, right? They're not absolute pushovers in terms of infantry, so they can fight okay here. We're going to go ahead and pull back, because we don't want to stay in combat there for too long, but... Uh, the triple gun crabs can now all just focus Marcus himself, and he is all of a sudden realizing that... You know, he sh maybe should have brought some winch hunters or something? <laughs> I mean, just joking, but yeah, the three ranged heroes versus the one ranged hero is not going to end too well for Marcus. You can see the bombers also getting into position to, uh... <coughs> excuse me. Sorry guys, my spring allergies are kind of killing me right now. Um, yeah. Bombers get into position to start bombing. And that's good stuff for me. The one Carronade also can continue just picking away at whatever targets. Really not going to generate much value, but I ha totally have uh, forgotten about my guns for the time being. Let's see if that ends up coming back to haunt me, as it is. Things are looking decent. We're able to route a lot of these Empire units, but at the same time, I have sustained a lot of damage on uh, some of my... You know, kind of chaff tier units, some my key units. Marcus also back from route here. Still plenty of huntsmen. You can see the balance power starting to stabilize a little bit. And as my summons wear off, um, you know, it'll it'll be all right over here. Also, the flagellants trading decently into the night terrors. Even though the night terrors will probably win this engagement eventually, that's a really cost-effective trade for flagellants there. But uh, here, these pistoliers. 
And Empire Knights fighting in combat, trying to finish off these bombers. They're throwing their little, uh, little nades point blank. Right, the halberds now move in. A few reserve halberds we have left. We've also got some huntsmen moving in on the flank to start shooting in. But the hounds... You guys know I'm a big fan of my hound units, especially utilizing them like in a big concentrated mass like this. And really get some very efficient work done. And the silver bullets paying the ultimate price here as the doggos come in and just, uh, you know, start to use them as chew toys, basically. <laughs> the Admiral has been taking a lot of focus fire, but thankfully the Pistol Admiral has access to some really nice items. For those of you guys who are not familiar with this character, she's got Opal Amulet and the Black Corrupt, which is basically like a temporary greater arcane conduit but in particular that opal amulet the 22 percent damage resistance 120 armor as well so those huntsman shots won't do too much damage more pistol summons also point blank blasting these uh <laughs> these poor flagellants and of course the gun uh the crab rather is the thing that gives the armor and quite a bit of extra hp as well oh man absolute brutality here as the the pincers go to work and I think that's army losses. Yep, looks like army losses as there's just a few unbreakable units left fighting. A handful of flagellants there, the Sigmar's sons. But looks like Killing Small is going to throw in the towel. So a big thanks to him once again for uh, having to <laughs> fight through not only Dwarfs but Vampire Coast. And we did play those games back to back. So a huge thanks to Killing Smalls. You guys will have to give him a big ups in the comments. And uh, yeah, for myself, these are, again, two factions that I don't really necessarily enjoy playing always, but there are s certain aspects of them that I especially like, and not to mention the pistols, obviously, that's just a meme by now, but definitely the, <laughs> the gunnery whites also, I legit am a big fan of them. And uh, dog units I also like as well, and especially utilizing them in a big concentrated mass like that for the Vampire Coast. Uh, can be very strong, but an excellent net there by Marcus was just about able to finish them off. Only the fact that, you know, crumbling is a totally valid mechanic that I was able to heal all of those wolves up and and get them, uh, you know, deployed back in the fight in the right way. Likewise, that one carronade that survived, I mean, it wasn't much, but it was there providing the shot by artillery leadership debuff, which is nice for me. 136 kills at the end of the day on the Night Terrors. I mean, they did get that good terror route on the Empire Knights and did chop up a lot of swordsmen and flagellants, but I guess they probably paid with themselves in that aspect. They're not, honestly not that expensive. The guns I did forget until the late game, but that ended up actually kind of working to my advantage in some in some ways. Um, but yeah, like the build from Killing Smalls, I would probably go with maybe more Free Company instead of... Uh, yeah, I mean, you you probably, I would go with some free company instead of the swordsmen, just because they can shoot um, and fight in melee. I mean, they'll still fight zombies just fine, not quite as well as, as state troops, but the shooting aspect as well means he, you can concentrate, especially on light targets. Um, stuff like the Morngulls or like the Hounds, they can they can fight them pretty well. But still, I mean, this is pretty pretty standard stuff to what you see for Empire. I know Killing Smalls was mentioning he would like to use the... Um, what is it, the Uranian's Thunderbolt, rather than Fireball to take out artillery pieces, and it actually worked pretty well here. I mean, you saw he was able to take out two of them, and then I kind of just pushed my army forward from the Carronade to zone him out from taking out the last one. But yeah, worked out pretty well, so big thanks to him once again. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.